welcome to our second episode of Dog Walks with a, a CEO. Hopefully you uh, you enjoyed the ramblings from, from my last one. Um, so what do I think I'll talk about today? Before I get on to the subject that, that I did want to talk about, um, it was really nice the engagement we got from the last video. And uh, I thought I'd answer at least one of those questions that were private message to me uh, last time. Um, what breed is Cooper? So it's, <laughs> it's great that we want to talk about um, business and, and things that are going on, but uh, what breed is Cooper? So Cooper, um, who's again out with me enjoying his walk, is a Sprudel. Uh, Sprudel is a mix between uh, an English Springer Spaniel and a Poodle. Um, absolutely nuts. Uh, wouldn't have him any other way. Uh, further news, the wheat that we saw last time on the walk, we've now had harvest. Uh, so the field's looking a little bit bare in comparison. Um, but yeah, please keep up those uh, comments and, and, and questions. They really are very valued. Um, and I think one of the, the things that I want to talk about this time is just to, to set a bit of, a, I suppose, a, the scene of... of, of why we do what we do and I did promise this uh, wouldn't be all about giant screening um, this one will be um, I do promise you I will never give you a sales pitch in in one of these I don't think I have the energy when I'm walking to give a sales pitch um, but one of the things that I think is always interesting is how people get to a, to where they are what drove them to to, to do something, and in particular, what drove me um, to found Giant Screening. So, after a, a number of jobs in, in different sectors, I ended up in the screening industry. Now, I always say that that was about 15 years ago, but I'm pretty sure I've been saying that for the last at least five years. So let's go with 20 years uh, I've been in this industry. And when I first started off, it was a wonderful place to work um, because it was a fledgling industry. It was a new industry, yeah, background checks people were doing, but was there third parties like us providing them? Not really many. Um, so when we started in this industry, we were very focused on what customer wanted, delivering on the client needs, you know, just giving that, that great service and, and to all of our, uh, our clients at the time. Um, and then throughout my tenure in this industry, I've seen that shift quite dramatically. Um, what the industry did was really commoditize what we do. Um, and that was driven by price, uh, efficiencies, uh, which I'm all for, um, and mainly margins. So it was kind of like, right, we've got this industry, we've got this product that people want, how can we now make as much money as possible out of that product? Um, and that's when I started to see a distinct, distinct shift away from what does the customer want to what do we as a business um, want to deliver? Um, and it was all driven by margins. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand margins. I understand the need for margins. A, a business needs to be profitable. Um, but there's other ways of doing it than just driving down your costs. Uh, and most of that in our industry is driven down by not delivering the kind of service that a client would necessarily expect. Um, and I say that, but our clients grew to expect that level of service. They grew to ex almost accept that, do you know what? You're gonna get a bit of a crappy service, um, but that's the nature of the beast, which isn't great. Um, so yeah, so as I say, I understand margins. Um, to, to, to many people's shock, uh, I did graduate with an MBA. Um, and that's, this, that's a whole nother uh, conversation altogether on how much I disagree with what MBAs teach you um, and how relevant they are really to the real world business environment or the, world, the, the, the business environment I think we should be operating in. Uh, so, cut a long story short, because I said I promised I'd keep these at five minutes. Um, this one might uh, go slightly over. So, 
I got to a point where I was just desperately unhappy um, and I was working in kind of a sales customer success uh, environment, not in operations. So I had relatively little impact then on the service that was delivered. All I did was um, dealt with the complaints coming from the customers, the dissatisfaction constantly from the customers. And I just got to a point where, I just, you know what, I really think I could do this better. Um, you got a little bit of arrogance in there. Um, I thought I can, I can do this better than, than, than they can. Um, and I decided to found Giant Screening. Now, to do that, I needed to find um, an organization that I could work within that shared my kind of values. Those values that really is customer first and the business will grow just through delivering that customer first. And when I say customer first, it literally is. Everything we do, we go, right, what would the customer want? How do we deliver that to the customer? What's best for the customer? Margins come from that. You know, once you've got critical mass of customers and you've got critical mass of happy customers, then margins are there. They'll always come. Um, I was really fortunate in um, coming into the fold of the giant group. Um, they gave great investment in time, um, infrastructure, money, uh, which you need to start start any business. Um, I had a phenomenal mentor in our group CEO, Matthew Brown. Um, so aligning those values of what I wanted to achieve and what Giant Group was all about. Um, so that's where we uh, that's where we started, and it was pretty simple. It wasn't uh, I don't know, it wasn't a um, something that you'd write a book about because it's not to me um, that clever. It's purely that customer first philosophy. Let's do everything the customer wants. Sometimes that's really difficult, but we managed to do it um, and see what happens. So we're five years down the line. We started with zero customers. We're now over 300. Um, we're growing internationally. And all of that is purely through um, delivering the, the, the right customer experience, the right candidate experience and all of those things. Sounds corny. And sometimes when I see those you know, customer first posters up, I just think, oh, that's something corporate bs that they've put up there but not when you live and breathe it and all of our staff have to, to to live and breathe it as well um it's helped us develop our product so rather than going to the customer going look this is what we deliver this is what we want you to have we go to the customer what do you need um and simply from that we've developed our our product over the years we're continuing uh to to innovate in there do I think we are an industry disruptor? It's not what we set out to do, I guess. We just set out to, you know, do something good. Um, but yeah, I think we have, because we've noticed that uh, some of the other providers are trying to catch up, but they're too big, they're too cumbersome. Um, the culture isn't there to be able to do that. And without that culture, then um, they'll never get that. So, I'm going to go because I promised you five minutes. I'm now looking at my phone. It's telling me uh, eight and a half. And I could probably wax on about this subject for, for quite some time. Um, and no doubt it will it will pop up again. But, uh, but yeah, thanks for listening. Probably not quite as sunny a day as it was last time. But hey, actually, it's a lot cooler. So we can't complain about that. So uh, <clears throat> thanks very much for tuning in. I'll try and do one of these every week. Um, again, feedback, let me know what you want to hear about and uh, thanks very much. Uh, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Cooper. Thanks.